for putting this um, event on. I came here for the Dev Days last year, uh, and this event is just uh, a bit of a step above it, which is really good. So um, thank you for doing that. Uh, and then Sync Fusion and, and Microsoft. So thank you to all our sponsors. So I'm going to be talking about um, unidirectional user interface architecture. It's actually a bit of a um, bit to take in, isn't it? Unidirectional. Every time I actually say that word, I'm just like, oh. I mean, somehow we need, need to make it smaller. Anyway, so um, some of the patterns I'll be talking about is Flux, Redux, and Reactive. Um, just to give you a bit of a background on myself, uh, I'm Michael Ridland. I have a team of Xamarin developers, uh, mostly in Sydney. Uh, we do some like um, work in the UK and uh, the US as well. Um, but basically, for the last three years, we've just been building Xamarin apps uh, day and night. Um, so who's heard of MVC? Uh, what about MVVM? What about RX? Uh, Flux? Okay. So there's a few people. Um, what about Redux? Alright, so I think this will, this will be good. This will give you a bit of an introduction to um, what Flux and Redux are, uh, unique directional architectures, and also um, an implementation uh, in Xamarin Forms. So there's a few around, so there's actually there's even um, other versions of unidirectional uh, user interface architectures. Um, so just go over the agenda, what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so just a recap of MVVM, um, and then an introduction to the unidirectional. Um, then we're going to be talking about Flux and sort of how that started, uh, and a bit about Redux, which is like an implementation of Flux. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about functional reactive programming in Rx. Um, and then we're just going to compare that uh, functional reactive programming to unidirectional, just to like give a bit of context. Because I know um, when I started like looking into this, it was really confusing how everything would actually um, fit together, and that's what I'm trying to like answer um, mostly today. Uh, and then also like MVVM versus uh, unidirectional. And then we'll just have a little bit of a summary just to sort of get our heads around it. There's a lot to a lot to take in if we haven't actually heard of it before, so we'll just um, take it slowly. And then we're going to look at some resources as well. So just a recap of MVVM if, for all the people that have sort of touched on it a little bit. So MVVM is a design pattern. Um, it stands for model, view, view model. Um, so your model is like your domain. Um, like it would be, if you've got a quoting app, it would be your quote. Uh, if you've got like a CRM, it would be your contact. So it's, it's your data model. Uh, the view is the view. So if you're using Xamarin Forms, it's a Xamarin Forms XAML page. If you're using iOS, then it's a native iOS view, or if you're using web, it will be HTML. Um, and the view model is the, um, it's basically contains the, the view logic and the view data um, specific to that view. Um, not really business logic, but more just view logic is what's supposed to be in there. So you can see here, we've got our nice uh, design pattern here with some graphs. So we've got our view, we've got our data binding. So it's important to note that's a two-way data binding between the view and the view model, and then we've got our, our model here. And then you can see here, this is the presentation and presentation logic, and then in the model is the business logic and the data. So MVM is good because it, um, it, it, it's good for de decoupling, so you're actually um, decoupling your view um, from a view model and you can uh, easily unit test against it. Um, it makes the code cleaner uh, and testability, so you can do, do unit testing, as I said, against your view models. Um, so what do you need for MVVM? Views, views, and view models. Uh, a binding engine, so somehow, some way to bind um, view models to your views. Uh, so Xamarin Forms has this built in, as we'll see in a second. Um, so you can see here, you've got your views, your view model, your binding engine, um, and then obviously your models. So with Xamarin Forms, uh, Xamarin Forms has most of the stuff that you need um, for MVVM built in. So you can do MVVM in Xamarin Forms. Uh, so it has all the things we already discussed, the data binding, the view models. Um, so we can see here, you've got your, um, your views. So this is a, a Xamarin Forms label. Um, I'm aligning it to the center, but here I'm actually doing a binding. So I'm binding that label's text property uh, to the first name. So anytime in the view model the first name updates, that's going to update on the label. You can also do that in XAML here. So we've got an entry element. Um, basically this bit of um, content here is exactly the same as when we set it um, in the code. So we've got a text there and we're binding to the first name on the view model. 
So bindable view models. Um, if you're if you're using C sharp, you're always going to have um, a bindable view model because all you need to have a bindable view model is to have uh, implement the iNotify changed property. So you can see here, um, I've implemented the property or the interface here. So I've got my property changed event handler. Um, I've got my property here. Then whenever it's changed, I'm actually calling um, this event. So this event here is the important part. That's how the view actually knows that uh, something's changed in the view model. Um, just to shout out, if you're using Xamarin Forms and you're thinking about using MVVM, uh, I'd you know, recommend having a look at uh, fresh MVVM. It's what we use. I mean, um, it's pretty much every project we do that we start off with a simple project where we use fresh MVVM. It's been really good to us. Um, so uh, I just I just recommend it for people. So it forces a good architecture. It avoids uh, the boilerplate code that you need for wiring events, um, and it fills the gaps. That, that so Xamarin Forms has almost 80% of the stuff that you need for MVVM, but there's a sort of just a little bit that's actually missing, which uh, fresh MVVM adds back in. Um, and it's really light, so it only has the stuff that you need um, for MVVM in Xamarin Forms and nothing else. And specifically designed, and it uses a convention over configuration similar to MVVM Cross. Uh, and it, it's borrowed the, the good parts from MVVM Cross. Um, one of the really good things about Fresh MVVM is the, um, the it's got four levels of navigation abstraction, so it's really flexible in how um, you can put the navigation together. So basically, any sort of um, any application that somebody comes and wants you to build, you'll be able to do it with Fresh MVVM. There's no real um, blockers there. So, so now I'm just going to go on to unidirectional um, architectures. So. So this is the Facebook um, and application. I'm assuming you would have seen it before. Um, this is what it looks like now. It's pretty similar to now. Um, so you've got here, you've got uh, like a conversation here. So this is a conversation between two people. Um, this is the same conversation, but it's in a, a different type of dialogue. And then up at the top right there, um, you also have like a little notification of, of what's been read and, and unread. So. Just have a little think about how you'd actually implement this in code. If you're going to try and implement this in code, how would you actually go about it? So it's a little bit hard because we've got this view here, which is showing the same data as this view here. Um, and then somehow you have to figure out if something's red, and then you have to actually notify um, that top little bar up there. Especially if you have a large team and lots of people working on a single application, it's going to get really hard. Uh, and this is how Facebook did it. Can everyone read that? probably a little bit hard to read. But basically, um, the way that they've done it is very imperative. They've um, incremented the unseen count. So you can see it's a new message at the top there. Can everyone read that, or is that a little bit hard to read? And then one, once the message comes in, they have an unseen count, and they increment the unseen. Um, and then they actually get the chat tab. They append the message to the chat tab. They also get the, um, the messages tab, and they append it to the messages tab. And then they go through and see if the chat tab is open. And if the chat tab is open, it means that they can decrement the unseen. So um, doing it this way, um, they, they ended up with lots of issues. And um, I don't know, does anyone remember it was broken? Like it would also, like, you would basically have no unread messages and it would be, be like five. Um, so they used to get lots of complaints. Um, that was one of the nicer complaints that they got about it. So this is kind of what happened when they were using their MVC and their, their rich um, client application. So they have their, their action, their controller. But basically, um, MVC, when, they try, when they try to scale it, they couldn't actually figure out how to scale it really well, um, especially with people working on different areas of the application and, and crossing boundaries. So what are the problems with sort of traditional MVC? Um, fat view models. Uh, so, is anyone, if anyone's built like a really big Xamarin application, you end up with like these view models that are just thousands of lines, which is something that you definitely don't want uh, when you're building an application. Is, is large uh, fat classes, um, duplicated data. So, if you've got view models all over the place and the data's been duplicated, and then you might update it in this place, but it hasn't updated in another place. Also, imperative code, as we saw in the Facebook example there. So this is a uh, Facebook solution. So this isn't the first unidirectional architecture, but this is probably the first one that most people um, uh, have seen. Um, so it's probably the first mainstream one. So you can see here, 
we've got an action. The action goes into a dispatcher, which goes into a store. So a store would be like where your data's kept, um, and then the view can actually um, see what's in that store. So if somebody has an action, just say they um, reply to a message, that becomes um, an action here, and then it goes back into the dispatcher, and then goes into the store. The one thing that you can note um, is the fact that you see how it's always going around? It's always one way. So there's, there's no two-way uh, data mining, or there's no um, multiple interaction. It, it's always um, a one-way flow. So that's why they call it uh, unidirectional. So you can see here, taking the, the Facebook chat app as an example, we've got an action here, which is we've got a new message. Um, so this is the messages up here. So these are uh, a different um, different stores, but this is the messages data set. So the messages are going to the chat tab view uh, and the messages view. So uh, what Facebook like with Flux is, is the fact that you're um, you have internal um, internal control they call it. So the action comes in and the data changes, but how the data changes is actually internalized in here. So you can see this is the blue color. If we go back here. So this is the data store. So the data store is actually internalizing how the data um, should behave or, or how it actually changes. So if we click to the next one, we've got our actions uh, first. So we go to the chat tab. When there's another action, so just say we're marking it as seen. So we've, we've got our chat tab. We've seen that the message is read. So we're actually marking it as seen. We're going back around, back around again, and then go, we're going back into um, the data set, unidirectional. So this is, this is how it actually works. So this is everything together. So doing exactly the same thing again. We've got the, the chat tab and the chat view. Um, and both of them can mark as seen. And then it'll come back around as an action and then go through to your store. So that's the, the Flux uh, unidirectional architecture. So Redux, um, Redux is something that I started. I never actually implemented the Flux because uh, I couldn't find many uh, .NET versions of the Flux architecture. So Redux is what I came along when I was playing around with trying to implement this stuff in uh, Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. Uh, so Redux, Redux is like an implementation of Flux, but it's a modified implementation. It has a few um, little differences. Uh, and the main difference is it has like a single immutable state, uh, state tree. So Flux has uh, multiple state, uh, multiple stores. So there's multiple places that that your data can be stored. Whereas with Flux, you have like a single place. So it's a single immutable state tree. Uh, it's a single source of truth. So if something changes, then it always goes back through this data source, and you always read from that data source. Uh, so there's no dispatcher as well. So there is a dispatch function, function, but it's also always going to um, one um, or one the source of truth. Uh, your reducers are, are made by um, pure functions. So reducers are actually what uh, mutate the data. So this is a little diagram of it. So somebody deposits $10, uh, creates an action. The action goes into the dispatcher. But the dispatcher is not like a, a flux dispatcher. It's just a dispatch uh, function. Reduce the reducers modify the data set, and that's what comes out in the state there. So we can just have a look at the actual implementation of it. I'm just going to change this. big enough for everyone to see? I mean down the back. Yes, yeah, so Ben told me that I was doing this presentation like three days ago, so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for it. Um, so I would have liked to do the exact uh, Facebook um, sample, but this is a sample 
um, that was sort of easier to get. So I took this sample and I've done some modifications to it. Um, so let's just go back and have a look at our diagram here. So you can see here, um, when something changes on the UI, we've got an action which then goes to a dispatcher. So let's just go and have a look through this application and, and see where we see we can find an example of that. So this is not your typical um, um, Xamarin Forms application. The main parts of this application um, that, there are, that are the actual uh, application are these um, top four projects here. Um, whereas the, the top three up here are basically just the framework. So you basically can do more of the top three and, and we'll just focus down uh, in the bottom four there. So this is the forms application. Um, where all my XAML is and where all my, um, my U, UI and um, UI logic. So I know that in my header so this is a to-do application. What I can do is I'll just give you a little demo of the two applications just so you have a context of how it's actually fitting together. So I'm just going to get some coffee. So up in the top there, that top header part, which we're going to look at now, that's where I've actually entered my data. So what I've got up here, I've got an entry. And then on the, the completed event, let's just have a look at that completed event. So on that completed event, I get my application and then my single store that I have in that application, I dispatch a, an action. So that action is a, a add to do action. And you can see I'm taking that bit of text. I'm just putting it through there. Um, and then after that, I just empty out the text box. So that's just taking my store and it's dispatching, uh, dispatching an action. So if we go through, and let's have a look at what is, it, what is a to do action. Let's have a look at that. So what I've got done there is I've actually gone into um, my to do MVC. Um, project and I've got a, a file here which is called actions and you can see here I've got like a bunch of different actions that I could do in my to do application so I've got add to do, delete to do, <laughs> complete or complete all so these are all different actions that that my um, application can perform. Normally because I didn't have time to set up this project like I would uh, normally would I would not have a single file with all these classes in it I would have things like um, put into feature folders um, but this is just what I had to do with my short amount of time. Uh, so, so I put that add to do action. So now that I've put that into my Redux system, what actually happens? How does it how does it actually change? So if we go back to our diagram here, so we've got our action. It goes into a dispatcher. So the dispatcher is just a function um, which calls a reducer. So let's just go to um, the reducer. So you can see down here in my reducers, better to start down the bottom here. So this is um, where I reduce the application. <coughs> so I take in the previous application state and then I also take in the action. Then once I take in that, there's a um, to do's reducer, which is this function up here. Now, the way this is done, I, I don't like either. Um, normally, I would prefer to like split up my reducers, uh, reducers into like features, um, and then have them sort of spread into the areas that they need to be. Um, this is just a single reducer, but it works for the simplicity of it. So you can see here, I've added my to do. So what it's actually called there is it's called the add to do um, reducer. So what you can actually see here is 
I've got my previous state, so just say I've added five other to-do items, um, but I want to just add one more. So I take my previous state, um, and then I insert a new one. So that's actually just uh, inserting one more to-do. So you can see here, then it comes through the reducer, and then after the state comes in here, then it can actually go back to the UI. So we've added to do, um, somehow we actually need to update the UI. So if I go into the um, main section, so in this line here, or these couple of lines here, I've got my app and then I've got my store, which is my single source of truth. Uh, I'm subscribing to changes in that. Uh, so now once a to-do has been added, I can just update my item source on my, on my list view. And that's basically what's happening there. So we can go through and One of the really good things about Redux is the fact that it's, um, because you're doing everything in actions, uh, you have the full history of the mutations in the system. So um, just say you've done like 30 different actions and you want to go back to how it was um, 15 minutes ago or 15 actions ago, you can actually do that in Redux. Um, so what I'm actually going to do here, I'm just going to change this into a time machine store. So this will actually allow me to control um, that history that I have in the application. Then I'm just going to check in my main page. So here, um, my time machine, uh, I'm just setting up my time machine store and then I'm setting it um, across to this time machine. And you, you would have seen it over to the right. Um, there was a right panel in the application that you saw. I'll just run it again so you can have a look. I'm just going to put in a few to-dos. Um, so what you can see is, as I'm adding it to-do, you can see the actions uh, coming through there. So these are all adding it to-do. Uh, but everything's actually an action that's going through the system. So when I switch this, it's actually um, completing uh, the to-do item with the, with the ID. Um, so even when I actually want to like, like do a filter on the data, I can put that through as an action as well. So just say I want to see ones that are just um, in progress, and that comes through as an action. Or if I want to see um, all the complete ones as a complete, or if I want to go through it and see all of them. And then I can clear them. So what we can actually do is we can go through the whole sy history of the system. So you can see um, this morning uh, how many things I've added and marked off. So uh, first I had a haircut and then I had a coffee, well added a coffee uh, and then I added that I needed to have a shower, got my coffee, um, removed that and now I still have to go and uh, have a shower and a haircut but I already did that so I can just mark them as done. And then what I need to do later tonight is drink beer. So that's one thing that's not done. So I can show what's in progress. I've still got to just do that. I can see the things that I've completed. And I can go through the full history. Does anyone ever like build a system where um, sometimes the data in the database, you're like, how did it actually get to this state? I don't actually know what, actually, what, I, what bit of code actually changed that. With a system like this, you don't have to worry about that because you have the full history of, uh, of everything. <coughs> I'm just going to clear all that. 
great. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take you through. Is there any questions there? Yes. Will the store become immensely large as time progresses or like more challenges are? Yes. So um, that's definitely a possibility. So um, one thing that I actually thought about with doing this. Um, there, there has to be a point where you can actually say this is um, a cutoff state because if you're keeping everything, I mean, generally like it's text data, so it's not like it's going to be like a huge amount of data. It depends on how many sort of events you've got coming through. If it's see like a to-do like list, that's not going to take up much, um, even if you used it for five years all the time. Like the amount of data that's going to use on a device is going to be less than downloading an image because it's just text data. Um, but what you can actually do, I was thinking about this. One thing that I really don't like um, about this is it's got one subscribe. So one thing that I would like to do is actually um, divide it up so when you have your single source of truth, um, you can actually subscribe to um, different types of um, changes in events. But yeah, I think that that's possible. Um, that could be an issue. Um, but yeah. That's a follow-up question. So if you raise it, is it possible to compact the data? Like, for example, just take the last data to the rest of the history. Yeah, so yeah, so you, you, you should be able to um, say that, um, compact it and say this is the start of my data set now, and then you've actually reset the data, and, and then you can get the history, say, just for today. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, debug this application so we can just have a look at it and see how it's working. So I'm just going to use um, the add to do. Um, so let's just go put the breakpoint here. I'm just going to need a coffee. So I've got my um, my dispatch function here. I'm just going to jump into that. You see, I jump into my uh, dispatcher, and there from there, I'm going to jump into my reducer. So you can see here, we're actually going in to reduce our application, and then we're going in, as I said, to our um, to do. Um, or add to do and then we're actually mutating the state there and jumping back out so that's the the basics of um, Redux you can go into a little bit more detail because you have to think about an API and how does an API uh, integrate with this. Uh, okay, that's the demo. So um, Redux ha also has an idea of uh, middleware, which, uh, which actually allows you to sort of intercept um, actions and, and perform other actions. Um, let's just have a look at the code base uh, for this, for Redux, because you can see how simple it is to actually implement. So what I was showing you, most of that code that I showed you was actually part of um, the application, which is the client application, not the framework. Um, but up here you can see that I've got uh, the Redux, which is the framework, the framework I was using. So you can see here, got an action, uh, it's pretty simple, it doesn't do much. Um, most of the code is in the store. It's actually quite simple. Um, so you can see here, I've got a re uh, replay subject. Basically, that's um, where it's storing all the data. Um, so you can see here, all it does here is dispatch um, that action. Um, and then it's just got the last state. So one thing that you notice here is um, when you create your store, um, you're allowed to pass in a list of middlewares. And if I jump in here, you can see that these these middlewares are applied um, before the um, the final um, reducer is run. 
Is there any other questions before I move on? So you use both? So I'll go into that a little bit later in more detail as well. But um, yeah, so you can you can do it both ways. Um, Redux, uh, if you with Xamarin Five, use Xamarin Forms, and like Xamarin Forms, what we use uh, Redux with. So we still use MVVM and Redux together. Actually, you even notice um, this application is not built uh, perfectly, but normally, um, even with using Redux, where I've got this footer here, um, normally I would have like a footer view model that corresponds, even though I'm still using like Redux. So Redux is more about the application like architecture uh, and, and managing of uh, application data, whereas like MVVM is about the view and the view model. So it's actually the, just the view side. <coughs> so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, functional reactive programming in Rx. Um, so I guess it can be a little bit confusing to understand how like all um, the, all of them fit together. So that's why I'm sort of introducing this at the same time as Redux, so I can actually just compare them. Um, so functional reactive programming is a different way of thinking, a different way of um, programming basically. So has anyone got a watch? Can someone with a watch stand up? Who's got a watch? I've got a watch on. Watch Yeah. You want to stand up for a second? Okay. So um, now we're looking at pulling. So if I just ask you, what's the time? It's uh, uh, three o'clock. Three o'clock. Okay. So I'm going to ask you again. What's the time? Three o'clock. Okay. What's the time? Three o'clock. Okay. So how do we do it a different way? Can you tell me um, what the time is every fifteen seconds? <laughs> <laughs> So the, the idea of uh, functional reactive programming is you're not going and um, collecting the data or uh, like pulling it towards you. Uh, the data is actually coming to you. Um, and that's kind of like the basis for it. So normally, uh, a lot of the time, you'll deal with um, I enumeral, especially if you're doing C sharp. So you have a list of items, and you'll iterate over that list. Um, you'll get the data you need. You'll ask questions, and, and you'll mutate it. Whereas uh, when you're doing it reactively, um, things will come to you. So um, if you have something which is, like, say, a Bluetooth API, the data actually comes to you and you observe what's happening with the data. And then you can um, uh, perform operations on that data in a more of a declarative manner. Um, so <coughs> uh, reactive extensions, um, or functional reactive programming, which is reactive extension is an implementation of, um, is not just used for the UI layer, it, c it can be used for anything. So you can see here, you can use it for the UI events, but you can also use it for just say hundreds of social media events, um, stock, um, and as I said before, Bluetooth, or anything that's coming coming to you. So pretty much most of an application can be built using uh, reactive extensions. Does anyone, uh, I assume a lot of people um, use the task parallel library and, and async in C Sharp. So basically anything that you can turn into an async um, function or anything that is a task can be turned into um, an observable. Yeah, so, so changes are pushed to you um, rather than you going out and getting the changes, so it's events or input. Um, so you can react in like a declarative manner. So I could say, um, push me all the data which is coming from a certain social media feed um, and filter it out so it's only ones that are for Monkey Fest. Uh, 2017, and then uh, just display those, rather than me going and, and collecting the data myself. Uh, and then you can actually filter and uh, modify the data in a declarative manner. So this is a bit of an example. Um, so I've got a quick stream here, um, and what we're doing with that quick stream is we're throwing it, so um, uh, it's not coming to us in, um, in too much of a chatty way. And then here we've actually filtered it. With the with the throttle of 250 milliseconds, um, and then we're actually like mapping it, so we're getting the length of the list, and you can see here that's the length of it there, and then we're filtering where it's greater than two. So this is where the data's coming to you, and and you're declaratively saying how I want my application to behave. Um, so functional reactive programming is a paradigm, um, while Rx, uh, a library, is used to follow uh, function, will follow the paradigm. 
So I say libraries because Rx is not just in .NET. There's um, now ports of it in um, Swift, Java, JavaScript, um, pretty much any major language actually has a port for, for reactive extensions. Um, and Reactive UI is a .NET MVVM framework um, built with for um, Rx in mind. Um, yeah, so it's a library for composing asynchronous event-based programming um, using observable sequences and link style queries. Um, so basically, um, what that's saying there is uh, rather than us going and sort of using async and, and waiting for things to come back to us, um, we just observe, put a, an observable function in and we wait for it to, to come to us and then we can, um, then we can actually mutate that data. So there's a person, does anyone know who Jeffrey Huntley is? So if, um, if you don't know him, you probably should go and look him up on Twitter and follow him. Um, he thinks that a lot of developers have their, their head in the sand about Rx because um, anyone who are early adopters have actually um, been using Rx for a long time now. Um, so he's saying that, that Rx is like uh, unit testing, so it's ac actually agnostic to like implementation. It's just a way of thinking, a way of programming. Um, so knowing Rx is not just mandatory for .NET developers, but um, Angular web developers. Now if you're doing the new version of Angular, you need to know Rx um, native uh, mobile developers. So there's Rx Java and there's Swift as well. So um, if you're a developer, investing in knowledge in Rx is definitely going to pay off in the long term because it, it's just so it's transferable to every other language, um, and I, I think it's well. Jeffrey definitely thinks it's going to be here for a long time, um, but I think that he, he could be right about that as well. Um, so now I'm just going to talk about uh, reactive programming versus unidirectional. Um, so unidirectional is like a tool, uh, architecture design pattern for managing state in an app. So it, it's not really um, a paradigm or a way of like programming, where the function reactive programming is like a way of working, a way of like uh, doing development. Um, so a lot of actual implementations like that, Redux implementation, if I take you and, and show you this. Um, Packages. So this Redux implementation was actually using um, the reactive um, frame or Rx uh, reactive extensions. So it was actually I don't know if anyone noticed. If you're a React um, Rx developer, you would notice that uh, this replay subject is actually part of um, Rx. So it, um, Rx is is used for more cases. So it's actually um, quite more, a lot more useful than, not that it's more useful, but it can be used in, in more places and it has more applications um, than just say like a, a UI architecture. Um, yeah, so Rx can be used to implement unidirectional. Um, and functional actually programming and unidirectional, are, they're not really competing. Um, as I said, um, they're kind of, they're different things. Um, and is MVVM dead? Um, so MVVM versus unidirectional, I think I kind of already answered this. They're not in competition. Uh, MVVM's more about the view, um, while unidirectional is about application state. Um, but application state is a really hard thing to manage, if anyone that's built a large application would probably already know. Um, so I did a blog post, it was actually two years ago, about this topic. Um, and then somebody came back to me um, they weren't using React or anything like that, or, or, or Redux, but they were just using um, Reactive UI um, and Rx. So basically, rather than um, putting it into a framework, they were just taking um, vanilla um, Reactive uh, Rx and Reactive UI um, and just doing a one-way data binding, so they didn't actually have to worry about the, um, the formalities of using uh, Redux. But the reason they did this, I don't know if anyone else, if you're doing a lot of MVVM, you might have weird um, issues with two-way data binding, fat view models. Um, so this was a really simple way that he did even before Flux came out to actually get around um, some of those issues. So he actually talks about here. Um, so yeah, so he was talking about the duplicated state all over the place. 
Um, and the way he solved it was input would always um, trigger a command uh, and the data bindings were only ever a one way. Um, so you would have a command that would modify the data uh, and then the data set would just update um, in one way. Which is pretty interesting. Uh, another like real world example is um, uh, page up people, I don't know, um, lots of big companies around the world use page up software uh, for their human resource management. Um, so it's a really big company, a really big company in Australia. <laughs> They're using um, Redux with uh, fresh MVVM in their Xamarin Forms application. So that's where this is MVVM and that's Redux and they're both actually working well together. Just in summary, this is kind of um, my interpretation of it. Um, maybe some people might argue, uh, but generally the view model architecture here, you've got your MVP, MVVM, um, RxUI and fresh MVVM. So those, they're actually frameworks. Um, and then you've got your unidirectionals, which is Redux, Flux, some of these ones. Um, I can give you some links if you want to read up about those. And then um, Rx and functional interactive programming is more of a paradigm or a way of thinking that can cross over many programming languages and into the future. Um, so Rx is not the same as RxUI, they're actually two different things. Um, functional Active Programming is um, not an architecture but a way of programming. Um, Rx has more uses than unidirectional. Um, as I said before, I showed you that um, Reactive Extensions is um, used to implement a lot of um, unidirectional frameworks. Um, and as Jeffrey said, you should probably be learning Rx right now. Um, Yeah, so unidirectional is about um, state management in rich client applications. Um, and that can be used in conjunction with MVVM. And Redux is pretty awesome because we saw that how we had that, that, that full history of the state changes in the application. So it's a little bit confusing. So what should you do or what uh, are we doing? I guess this is more about um, what we're doing as a company. So. That's all good. Um, so this is more about what we are doing as a company and, and the way, the direction that we would go. Um, so if it's a small app, uh, like with just like a single person on it, you just use fresh MVVM with some Rx. You should definitely be using Rx, as I said. Um, or if it's a larger app, then consider using fresh MVVM uh, with Redux and Rx, or otherwise using um, fresh MVVM with a, a DIY um, unidirectional using Rx. Well, that's what we're doing. Um, so yeah. I think I finished early. I did. Are there any um, questions at all? No such thing. <laughs> Does it align with the uh, solid principle? Yeah, I mean solid, um, all of the, everything I spoke about today would, would work uh, under solid. So solid is more about um, the, well the code at a lower level and like how you're putting the code together. Um, so really these aren't uh, competing or to do with solid. Um, but if you could use any of them and you could still um, adhere to solid principles. All right. So there's a really good um, guest lecture um, about implementing uh, Facebook's Flux uh, in your Xamarin application. Um, that blog post I did a while ago, you can go and have a look at that. Uh, the people that have been doing uh, Redux in the Xamarin Forms application, um, which was uh, page up people, the Medium, they've got like three uh, different posts on Medium. Uh, and then if you want to know all about more about fresh MVM, you can have a look at that. Um, actually, the, some of the original talks from the Facebook um, Flux um, on, the, on their website, um, they're really good to give you an understanding of like unidirectional uh, UIs. And then there's obviously Redux. Alright, so... Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, just 
um, feel free to grab me outside. Um, you can email me or just go to our website. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>